Join with me in our Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The national anthem this afternoon will be sung by Ms. Vicki Sanderson. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rockets regular the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Another round of applause for the Saginaw Fire Department Colors. Go, go. Please be seated. Mm -hmm. You know, as they say, from the mouth of babes, I had a young one ask me today, why are you going out on a beautiful Sunday afternoon to dedicate uh, or have a ceremony for a building? Well, the truth of the matter is, we're here today not because of a building, it's because of the people. It's the people that brought us to this site years ago, our forefathers. It's the people who sustained the last 30 years in the building, and it's the people that are going to take us to the next 50 years who are going to occupy this building. So today's dedication is about the building, both not about the building, but the people. Our forefathers, the current folks who are occupied, the people who will occupy it in the future. I also appreciate y'all re <laughs> rescheduling from the Isa Geddon, which was the 1st of <laughs> December, to this beautiful weather we're having today. If at this time I'd ask uh, Pastor Danny Howe to come up and give us our invocation. I second the mayor's opinion. This is a beautiful day to celebrate, isn't it? The Lord has given us a good one. Would you bow with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the many blessings that you have poured out in our lives. We thank you for these who are present today. Many of them have served in positions of leadership in the past. And we thank you for their service. Uh, we thank you for our current elected leaders and our city officials, Father. We ask that you just continue to bless us and to guide us and lead us as people. And bring us your wisdom, Father, and the things that are done and said that uh, truth and justice might reign always. And we thank you again for this important day and this celebrative occasion. And we uh, thank you so much, most of all, for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, for it's in His name that we pray. Amen. Amen. There's several introductions that need to be made on a day like today. I'm fortunate enough to handle the uh, city council and staff 
It's my pleasure to introduce you to the current staff, the current city council, Mayor Pro Tem David Flory, council members Delbert Sedbury. There you are, Delbert, in the back. Thank you, sir. Ms. Jackie Nethery. Mr. Ed Larson. Todd Flippo. Thank you, sir. Mr. Chris Barngrover. He's a small kid in the back back there. <laughs> and the rookie, so we still get the views in. Also, it's my pleasure to introduce some current staff members. How about the city manager, Ms. Nan Stanford? Assistant City Manager Finance Director Dolph Johnson. He's the other small one in the back. City uh, Secretary Janice England. Assistant Finance Director and Budget Analyst Kim Quinn. Human Resource Manager Melanie McManus. Assistant Administrative Assistant Office Coordinator Dorothy Riggs. Administrative Technician Water Karen Cromwell, Administrative Clerk Maria Gines, Administrative Clerk Terry Hurley, Director of Recreation and Community Service Mr. Keith Reinhardt, and if the PA system quits working, it's his fault, right, Keith? None of the glory, all the blame, Keith. We also have a city engineer, it's kind of unique, he's our engineer but he works for somebody else but we pay him as our engineer, that's Mr. Brad Tribble. Mr. Brad, thank you for being here, thank you for your 20 plus years of service. You don't look that old but uh, you've, you've watched over us for a long time, we're grateful for that. And last but not least, let me want to tell a little story. I want to thank the uh, Fire Chief Doug Spears not only for being here and bringing his guys but for the last year plus when this building was torn down. Doug had the honor, we call it an honor, of uh, having city administration down in his fire station one, <laughs> which meant a lot of things. It meant they had to watch their language. They, uh, they had to watch the uh, teasing they do to each other in the fire station. They also had to give up their bathrooms on their end of the hall, converted those to women. And they did it with grace, and they did it with, uh, with uh, servitude. And for that, sir, we greatly appreciate it. Thank you very much. Please join me in welcoming Councilmember Todd Flippo, who will do some additional introductions. Todd. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I, too, I'd like to second the Mayor's thoughts for, first of all, for this beautiful, beautiful building that we're going to celebrate today, and also for your attendance. I'm blessed to look around this audience and see a lot of old friends. Young friends, old friends, but uh, friends nonetheless. And I'm just so glad to have these people turn out. That's one of the beautiful things about Saginaw. Uh, we're still a small town, so a community where we know a lot of people know each other. And I'm just blessed. We're all blessed to be part of this community. Let me start with some uh, very famous folks here, some, uh, some dignitaries. You might not know you're sitting next to a dignitary, so let's point them out. Uh, one of our former mayors, but also the current commissioner, Mr. J.D. Johnson. Woo and our good friends from close by from Lake Worth, Mayor Walter Bowen. Another very close neighbor and a good friend, Mayor Walt Tauger, Mr. Hector Garcia. We also have some former mayors of the city of Saginaw here in attendance. Uh, I looked out and I see Mayor Bill, Mayor Bill Straw. Also see Monty Nichols somewhere. Where's Monty? Thank you, Monty. I know Frankie Robbins here somewhere. Frankie Robbins. We have some relatives of some uh, former mayors that are now deceased. Uh, Janie Fox, Patsy and Pat Green, Judy and Glenn Baker. We're also fortunate enough to have several former council members in attendance today. Uh, a very good friend of mine, Mr. Kenneth Reynolds. Dale Reed, Ms. Reed, Mr. Charles Turner, uh, Jerry Davis, where's Jerry, where's Jerry? Oh, Jerry. Uh, Mr. Steve Newcomb, where's Steve, 
I'm sorry, Steve was from the, uh, I didn't mention that, Steve was from the school board. And we thank so much for your help and support. I uh, have a, at least one former city manager here, uh, one of folks I call a friend, but also a great mentor to me, Mr. Pat Moffat. I think I've gotten everybody. Did I miss anybody? I don't think I missed anybody. Oh, and I also have uh, my father, who was former mayor, is not here, but my mother is here, Yvonne Fulton. Thank you, Todd. Yeah, it's great to be a you know, <coughs> Mayor of Haltham City. Is Richard here? There he is in the back. I knew I spoke to you earlier. Thank you, sir. It's great that you, Todd, is following your mother and father's footsteps. who have given so much to the city for such a long time. It's great to have second generations now serving on the council. I know that there's a story or two out there from previous folks who have served that would like to or needs to be told. Remember, this is being recorded, so keep it clean, keep it safe. Is there anybody out there that would like to tell a story or two from the from their past service to the city? I have a microphone here. I'd be glad to share it with you, Keith. Well, you I mean, know, it's being recorded, J.D. There's a lot of stories I can tell about a lot of people here in Saginaw, but uh, I guess the story I'd like to say is that, number one, this was not McElroy Boulevard. When, this, when the city took over this facility, this was Watauga Road. We changed it while I was mayor of Saginaw. Also, this was not city property. This belonged to the cable company. And we negotiated a deal with them to, uh, if they could close their studio, they would give us the facility. We accepted. <clears throat> and as a result, we came up here on weekends and at night, and a lot of us, elected officials, city employees, got our hammers and mails, and we did a lot of building on this old city hall that y'all tore down about 30-something years ago. But there's a lot of history here, and... <clears throat> I'm certainly proud of what I see today. My congratulations to you in the city. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anybody else would like to speak? Mr. Monty. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> Should I talk about you, JD? Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm not going to go there. When JD was first introduced, by the mayor of Fort Worth when he was running for commissioner, but I'm not going to tell him. <laughs> anyway, I see a lot of friends, a lot of old friends, a lot of people that I've known in years past, the 20 years I got to spend with the city in various capacities, but we failed to mention one name that I thought might be important to mention. And both of them are gone now, and that's Margie and John A. Keener. They spent a lot of time here. John Ed's name is on our library. He was standing in this vicinity when we dedicated the old city hall. And I thought it fair that uh, they're here in spirit. And I thought it might be nice to mention John Ed and Margie for all the years of service that they did for the city mayor. Thank you. That's really all I'd like to say. Well done. And I'll tell one on Monty. So when I got on, it was always about water system always about one day when we get old enough and big enough we need a water tower on the other side of town we got to get this water pressure up we got to have that water tower but that's a million dollars we'll never get that not in my lifetime we'll never and so finally we had some opportunities with some businesses come through they needed extra water you know how that works a little here a little there and all of a sudden the magic project happens money i never heard from you i never heard that oh my gosh we've arrived we have the water tower on the other side of town, Monty. We have arrived. Took it three years to get our thumbs <laughs> <laughs> And it's still not enough. Thank y'all for those stories. 
It's my pleasure to introduce you to our Mayor Pro Tem, David Flory, who will tell us about this wonderful project. David. Again, I say welcome to all that are here this morning, uh, this afternoon. It is a beautiful day, great day to be here. Um, my portion of, of uh, the ceremony here partially was already taken by uh, JD. Uh, we were to, to mention that this is the, the third city hall that we've had on this side. That uh, it was nearly 40 years ago, or excuse me, 30 years ago, uh, in, in uh, 1984, the, ca the council was uh, we purchased, received, negotiated, got this property from a cable company, and, and they did. The, the, uh, the, the employees, the mayor, J.D. Johnson, his council members, staff, they did work nights and weekends to convert that into a functional city hall. But then in 1993, uh, the building was expanded to, to help the growing needs of the city. Um, and since we were to continue in, in that, that growth vein, we needed more space to grow with it. Uh, the workspaces became cramped. Uh, there were mayors that didn't have offices, that did have offices, that didn't have offices, that had to give it up. Uh, the, we had no storage place for city records, and so uh, with, with age and, and roof leaks, structural issues, we decided to demolish it, take it to the ground, add additional space, and rebuild the city hall. Um, we also own uh, this piece of property behind us uh, on, on Opal, uh, to, to the uh, south of us just a little bit. Uh, that building was demolished and we added parking over there as well. Uh, we were able to increase our city hall from uh, 5,600 square feet to uh, 8,400 square feet. Uh, so we were able to enlarge it. Uh, the new building is much more functional, much more modern, uh, greater, improved audiovisual system. Uh, better, more efficient heating and air conditioning system. Just impure, it improved security for our city staff. Um, the architect that, that designed this project was Dewberry Incorporated, uh, same architects that we used to design the fire station number two, uh, which is over in Highland Station, the new rec center, um, the new police department, and the library expansion next to us here. Uh, I believe we have a representative here from Dewberry, uh, Mr. Tom Shaw. Would you wave to us, Tom? Tom Shaw is in the very back back there. Thank you, Tom. And staff. <laughs> um, general contractor that built our building was Denco Construction. I don't think we have any representatives here from them today. Uh, the construction cost on this was about $2.2 with our design fees, furnishings, et cetera, everything to open up the new city hall, the cost was about two and a half million dollars. During our high growth years, we were able to, uh, to, to save some money because the economy was good to our city and, and, and with the prudent use of what the money from our staff, we were, we were able to build out this building with funds in the, in the general fund that was set back for this it allowed for us to pay for this project with cash. Therefore, we didn't have to uh, issue bonds. We didn't have to issue any debt. And no, no, uh, that, that's the, go ahead and applaud there, Pat. That, that's a big deal. Uh, just another way that, that we're able to try and give back to our community and, and, and do our best with your tax dollars and, and to, to use it to, to the best benefit of you guys. Thanks, Mayor, for allowing me to share with, uh, with the, the folks here today, and thank you all for coming. Well, they talk about how younger generations aren't as strong and tough as the previous ones, and I guess that's obvious because we didn't bring our hammers or our nails to, to build this thing, nor do we have the skills and talent, I promise you. The next uh, couple of things is going to be or will be the uh, ribbon cut ceremony from our friends at the Chamber of Commerce and then we're going to unveil the new plaque inside and then we're going to go in for food. You know what y'all are here for? Some food and some drinks and fellowship. So in the foyer there we're going to have some, some desserts for you, some coffee, some juice 
and then they'll be giving tours of their new facility. Our staff is here and uh, very eager to show it off. I will tell you something really cool. This morning when I walked in, and it's been a month or so since we planned the first uh, opening ceremony, it still smells new. So even though it's been a month, when you walk through, you'll still smell the newness of the building. And uh, we've got a lot of people that want to brag. They've, they've uh, worked hard, been patient, we've saved money, and now we're getting to enjoy the fruits of that labor. So if you'll join me over here for the ribbon cutting ceremony, we'll cut a ribbon, we'll go inside and present a plaque, and then we'll go eat. How about that? Thank you so much for being here. Appreciate you. Wait a minute, we got a flyover. We know you can do it. Uh oh. You're gonna lose a finger, man. Anybody didn't trust you with any jewels, man. Apparently not.